the thing that makes me curious about that is like a lot of my experience a lot of my experience with um, enrollment and leadership and things like that where you're trying to paint a vision for somebody has been like almost volunteer based mm -hmm. right so it's been like Toastmasters or yeah. it's been uh, network marketing or something like that you know is it do you think it, it's simple because he's enrolling or do you think it's simple because they're already making money or like how do you uh, it's, uh, how it's does I mean, that, you're like, referring to like the, the positive feedback but it's there's a reason why the there has to be the inertia to get the positive feedback loop moving. So there's a whole bunch of different things that they said. So first off, he started in Degrassi. Yeah. So he already had connections. Okay. And he had people that, and he met, he's mentioned that he was always a charming, charismatic guy. He's like, I always kind of like knew what to say to the teachers and there were different people. So I think there's, there's definitely like that fundamental goo that made all the other things arise with it that is just like an element of creativity or magnitude, like magnetism, mm. like a certain magnetism mm -hmm. that he had. Mm. And then, you know, now, the gravitas. Yeah. And now he's acting and making money. Yeah. And then now he's getting told lines and he's, they're getting, he's getting crafted and taught and te teaching how to do it. And then he's in his own time practicing it. And then he's having experiences like women are on to him. He has friends and boys. He's going to these parties. Yeah, he's getting hyped He's up. having these experiences that other people don't have. And then that just when, keeps compounding on itself. And then that it starts compounding on itself. So that when he was ready to start making the music, he already had people around him and yeah. the producers and yeah. all that kind of stuff. And then from there, it's because he's so good, he attracts other people that are so good. And sense. then it just, and then once it hits a certain point, like now he just has way more creative geniuses vying to help him yeah. than he would ever be able to have. Yeah. If he never wanted to write a lyric ever again, he would no. have to. No, and it's just like all of it, man. Like all of his, all of his lines. He said, the, like the one line, it's a Sinatra lifestyle. I'm just being frank with you. Hey, where you think your girl at when she ain't with you? Hey, wild and doing shit that's way out of your budget. Owl sweaters inside of the luggage. You gotta love it. <laughs> that's heat. That's it's heat. literally his fucking brand. Owl sweaters brand. inside of her luggage. You, you gotta, gotta love it. it nice like the, the whole story that like the whole story that that paints it's like she's cheating on you <laughs> flown out to me because it's getting packed and then she left with a fucking loot bag because i gave it like, <laughs> I, and i don't even say it's my brand i just say owl sweaters because nice. my brand is known enough that you just hear yeah, that and it's you know obvious. exactly what i'm referring to mm. fucking genius man. Mm. and then it just starts into this whirlwind of itself yeah, you and I were talking about Jordan Peterson the other day and yeah. talking about how because he was a lecturer for so long in yeah. universities and he, because he had like the clinical yeah. practitioner side as well and just so much reference experience working with like real life clients and real life stories and getting to know them and finding out what their neuroses were and working on them that by the time anyone actually saw and noticed, it's like the same with Gary Vee. He was like working in the wine industry for yeah. 10 years before he ever started making any videos. Yeah, it's like it took me 10 years to become an overnight success. That whole thing. And with that, John Connell was actually telling me that, so Jordan Peterson, before working at U of T, mm. he worked at Harvard oh, okay. for, for years. And, and he was very familiar with the previous Harvard professors that got a spark of public light and then became popular. Timothy Leary, nice. who conspired with the Beatles, nice. all these different people. Yeah, it's a big name. Ron Doss. Really? Ron Doss. Was it yeah, Tim, at Harvard University? At Harvard oh, University. That. that was the psychedelic. Uh, John Connell gave me a book that I didn't end up reading yet called The Psychedelic Club. Nice. Whatever, because they, um, <laughs> they had a mushroom, like a psychedelic mushroom club at the school. So it, And the people were getting so mad. That's where the real education because is. Because it is. In these clubs. So they, were, they were giving out acid and mushrooms to all mm -hmm. these different people doing these experiments that inevitably they just kind of turned into more partying than just in sure. the lab experiments. Sure. This, this like awakening came, I forget that Ron Doss is yeah. actual name obviously isn't fucking Ron, Ron. Doss. Yeah. Yeah, it might be Dick, before. isn't it? Like Robert yeah. or something like that? Yeah, something like that. But, what was the Alan Watts yeah. quote with Ron Doss? Yeah, yeah, he said one night I was, um, Ron Doss was saying I was drunk with Alan Watts one night at 3 a.m. at a temple and he looks to me and he said, you know what your problem is, Dick? <laughs> You're too attached to nothingness. <laughs> um, yeah. But so anyway, maybe yeah. his name is Robert or yeah. Bob. Or so, so circling back there, I mean, they, those were two Harvard 
professors that basically got so much bad press because people started writing like cult following all this kind of shit as they, they do and they yeah as they do and they both basically got fired and but they went on to this huge critical acclaim and jordan peterson was obviously familiar with yeah. this kind of path and you worked at u of d but um I think it was something that uh, we both read a book by Brenda Burchard called The Million Dollar Messenger. Mm. And he says that the biggest mistake people make is they think, if I can just get a book on Oprah or some kind of big platform, then everything will fall into place. Sure. But he said what you can be, become very susceptible to is being a one, one hit wonder where you had this thing that was great and then all you have all this attention that people yeah. want to do what you do next and they go, look what else you got. Yeah. And there's nothing there. Sure. And that reminds with, me of yeah. that that chick. What is it? Catch me outside, chick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you got you went and saw her in Toronto, saw her, right? Yeah, you I'm saw her live. You got punched. What's her name? What's the artist? Uh, bad baby. Yeah, bad baby. Like, does she yeah. still perform? In that yeah, song? she's a millionaire. Yeah. She's oh, yeah. like seventeen she still goes? million okay. Instagram followers. Like, Thanks. she makes million dollars off apps. Huh? All this kind of stuff. She another great example of having a, building a team around you. Mm. But just all, all the point I was trying to make there is with Jordan Peterson is he had so much body of work, to your point, all the lectures. He had already put out already maps, made, of maps of meaning and lecture series sure. and all this. And he had products too, like self-offering yeah. and things like that. The self old products, was already yeah. there. So all the kindling was there for one public spark to just light that something that you could not, yeah, you're not going to be able to put it out point. now. Yeah. It's taken out all of Australia yeah. at this point. Yeah, all of the billions of animals. That's a lot. <laughs> Dude, the fact that you wow. said that means you've contributed. Uh, I didn't not contribute, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't like fly over there and start watering plants and shit. Yeah. So I didn't yeah. help that much. But yeah, no, I think um, you know, that's partially the reason why we're doing the podcast. Yeah. These are the that, reps. These are the repetitions, these are the 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 moments that are, you know, probably most people will never see. No. Most, most people will never see. But if they ever go back and check, yeah, we'll they'll be like, oh, wow, we'll like they really this, did. We'll have the most successful podcast ever after we're dead. Yeah. <laughs> that's when the money will start flowing. That's when the money that's starts, starts flowing, Joe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's, that's uh, where we are. Yeah, so, yeah we're, we're actually, doing? we're back in the hotel room. We we took a little bit of a hiatus from the, the show we settled into Santa Teresa and it was just like such a great community vibe here with Mike and his family and we were kind of milking, spending as much time with them as possible. I know you had a bunch of late nights with them, yeah, like yeah. staying up and watching the sunrise. Um, and uh, and we, were, we were planning on doing a podcast with uh, someone else that we met here. It just didn't end up working out. So as soon as we found out that that was fizzling out, we wanted to get this show going. Got it going, baby. Yeah, we got to get the show going. Yeah, I haven't slept. And I know you, you see, when I saw you today, you just looked chipper and rested. Yeah, and no, I actually got great sleep. Yeah, you look chipper and rested. And, I had a great couple of sleeps <laughs> and, and then I had a nap. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm satiated. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ian's got a satiation happening yeah, no, right now. <laughs> it feels great. Not to want anything, eh? yeah, it does feel good. Yeah, it feels good. <laughs> what do you want? Nothing, no. Yay. yeah. We were just kind of just sitting downstairs and uh hanging out in like the hostel common space out in the yeah. sun and just like just looking the look on your face, like this like <laughs> little baby smirk in the background of just like total contentness. Yeah, and I was content. like, we should probably record something. Yeah, what do you, what yeah, do you yeah, think, yeah, man? Yeah. We should probably record because we're just sitting in this garden of this absolute oasis, which kind of kind of going. To, into the theme of what we've had in terms of documenting our trip. It's, we, we just referred to our whole trip as being this kind of big pilgrimage. Yeah. And, you know, when we move on, we're going to get in places where there isn't a lot of foreigner people. And totally. there's, you know, your Spanish is going to get good, but we're still going to be like yeah. pretty kind of certain ways, like a recluse, or like the outsider, that yeah. kind of thing. And we're just kind of soaking up this checkpoint here sure. of being in this oasis mm. with people we know. And we just thought, because so many learning opportunities. Here. Yeah. And, and we're just going to stay here a couple extra weeks than we planned yeah. because it makes, why wouldn't we? If we're going to have an opportunity so, to hang man. out with Mike like I this. I think so, man. When, when are we ever going to get a chance to hang out with Mike like this uh, again? Extended? Maybe, maybe never in our Maybe lives. never. Like maybe Unless we, we really go all out yeah. and plan it and make sure it happens. Because yeah. that's why we do this podcast is people keep asking, what's the podcast on about? I'm like, it's about my commitment to the friendship. Yeah. Yeah, you our third entity, dude. It's fucking yeah, good, this is bro. the third entity right yeah, here. This show. The third entity. Hey. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree. Yeah. So I'm going to go back to San Jose for a few days and get a dentist appointment and then fucking come God. back here. And you're going to, yeah. The you're, gods, you're gonna the stick gods bless me with a toothache. With, for yeah, fractured teeth. But uh, fortunately, the dental 
tourism industry in Costa Rica is pretty damn good. It's like 60% less expensive to do this procedure. But you're going to stick around here? Yeah, I'm going to stick around. Nice. Yeah, stick around. Maybe I'm staying at Mike's place or something? I'm going to chill, chill at Mike's place. Let's they go. got an empty room now. Let's go. Yeah. yeah we got the, it, it's so interesting. So we have our friend Mike who he's basically a wizard in terms of like he's on the trajectory of being like a Gandalf. Yeah. He's definitely got some Gandalf Jesus kind of that yeah. archetype vibe of like the el- sure. elder wise like wise elder yeah, like yeah, how yeah. powerful yeah there's like a force for good and yeah but like shaking things up at the same time yeah because yeah, 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 yeah. gandalf is fucking troll too <laughs> yeah yeah there, there was a thing where um we were in a in a group when we were all together and we were with um uh with mike's sister so the guy we're talking about his sister emily emily and then they just left we missed yeah, yeah yeah and then mike was driving in the car with uh, his fiance Heather and they're driving by and like Mike looked at us and I remarked to Emily I was like he, lo- he he's such a like a child at heart that he was I, I kind of joked about him looking over to his fiance and be like Heather can I go play can I go play with them <laughs> and it's like this very light it, because what you said around them like strong and wise elder but then balanced out by the absolute just childishness yeah you know? innocent beautiful way and it, the the impression that i get and actually to voice i feel so much more comfortable with mike mm. than i ever had when i lived in toronto and that probably says more about me than it says about him because he seems sure. to be pretty congruent but like i was always intimidated by how effortless his communication mm. seemed yeah because like you're saying he's yeah. got this this like powerful balance with the child balance yeah. and it almost like he just surrenders to the moment yeah. And he's so present with it. And I, and I had always, I'd always been confronted. I was like, Oh, this guy is like really, a really powerful guy. Yeah. And was, you could feel it right yeah. when you're with him. Yeah. And I had that, like I had, I, I, I don't know if I've told you this, but I've definitely told Mike a couple of times where, and I told his sister is my first impression of him. Cause he walked yeah, in the yeah, office. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I just like looked at him and he just looks like the prototypical, like fucking like hippie, like cool hippie guy. And part of my like ego is like, yeah, fuck that guy. And like, you know, he, cause I saw him like laughing with people yeah. and everything. And I like, didn't like him for a second. If he was second. shredded, I would probably feel that. Yeah. Way. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then, he, but then he, he looks at me and smiles and Hey, I'm Mike, what's hey, your name? What's and I'm just like, Oh, I love you. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard not to love. Yeah. I don't, I doubt there's, he has probably not too many enemies. enemies yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I remember my first impression of Mike as well. It was his first day at Fix. Mm-hmm. And it's so funny to see him, Wiggum, oh, yeah, and yeah. then Terrence O'Hanlon. This like, <laughs> this, like, he's like an entrepreneur that like really Quirky loves maintenance. maintenance and reliability and like really for like it. for like manufacturing. So think about like a, a, a processing line for like Coca-Cola, like they've got all their bottles and it's all happening automatically or like a car manufacturer. And this guy just loves to make sure machines yeah. do what they're supposed to do. He's thinking of grease in the wheels. He, he loves it. And yeah. he came into our company, what, what was that? 2018, 2018, December. Yeah, December, 2018. We had the entire company yeah. all together for this two day workshop on reliability because we're a maintenance management software and it was Mike Maluski and I think it was Wiggum's Wiggum. first day. Yeah. It was Mike and Wiggum's first day. And like, you could just tell that these guys were investing in uh, their communication skills yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're investing in themselves and they're investing in like trying to, uh, they're really putting their best foot forward. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I remember they like, they created this like, purpose yeah this mission statement to like yeah. fix and what our purpose was around reliability and they stood up in front of the entire company on their first day yeah. in front of like in this in this massive workshop um and then wrote it out to us and like terrence yeah yeah love yeah that he hit shit. the nail on the head he love that that shit. guy he's he's uh, uh terrence o'hanlon he loves a good word mm. like a certain phrase mm. there's still a phrase that popped up on uh on the screen that he gave that i remember from fucking yeah. mr fuller oh saying, nice the There's best so way, poetry. the best way to predict the future is to, to create, create it. it. And then I actually saw that, and then he played an interesting role. So at that time, I was in contention for a promotion. Yeah, which was I, the AE job. Yeah, yeah, a small in, business in AE contention job. for an account executive, like the higher next role in the company. But there was a couple other like There's highly qualified, qualified for sure. uh, candidates yeah, and like for sure. Smart. Yeah, and then um, they were doing these different um, presentations, like 
uh, different small workshop groups at oh, this I large company thing, and a couple different people would be able to present their little same event their, that what they're working on. Same event. And I go up to him, I look him in the eye, I'm like, Terrence, I need a favor. He's yeah. Like, What's up? I'm like, I'm in contention to get a job, and my new manager is actually here right now. Uh, and I think it would be a great opportunity for me to speak in front of everyone yeah. to demonstrate my communication really, skills. The competency yeah. and my value. And, and I felt good about it because it was like betting on myself. Yeah. Because I could Dude, that's playing the win, bro. That's playing that's the playing win because win. if I went up, I could, because what if I was like, what if I say something that yeah. loses my chances? And I was like, nah, 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 nah. Let's, let's, put the, let's bet on myself. And I went up and I remember and the I- The chances of you doing well when your context is let's bet on me is so yeah, much higher. True. Because you're, th you're not thinking about what could go wrong because yeah. then the likelihood of it going wrong is yeah, 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 will yeah. go wrong. It's like Joe Dispenza. He's like, yeah. think about what you want, not yeah, what you yeah, don't yeah. want. Yeah. And then I, <laughs> like, I remember it was, I, it was some stupid, uh, it was like an ad for a mattress manufacturing company. Or okay. And I, oh, yeah, and I, I loaded it. it and I loaded it full of jokes. And I said, I said some sort of joke around Drake's kid. Yeah, there was a pun. And there was some like pun at the beginning that the whole, it like, sometimes you don't know and sometimes it's like, ha ah, but for some reason it just fucking nice. snapped. I remember uh, Natalie at the time, my, <laughs> uh, my manager before that, she told me, she's like, I can't believe you fucking said that. That's that so, was funny, so funny, bro. funny. That's so funny. Anyway, it just landed. And it, yeah, it, you're like, I'm going to be myself. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. Let the chips fall where they may. All where they made and where they fell is the guy i mean it somewhat impressed uh, the the manager i got the i got the promotion Congrats, man. Uh, i said i sent a nice message to Congrats, old terry yeah. o'hanlon nice and then he sent like a nice blur Paragraph. after that back you're right though about him loving a good word loves a good Love word. a good word and i think that's probably why mike and wiggum impressed them so much and also yeah. impressed the company so much because yeah. they were just like it was thoughtful yeah and they've both done um landmark. landmark so landmark education is like a personal development program they have like three um steps in their curriculum to living we've talked about it on the show before yeah and like they use they use specific language yeah um things like creating possibility so yeah, they were yeah, creating yeah. the possibility of fix having better reliability yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and yo terrence Terry, was like oh that guy was ready to be a go <laughs> that guy was ready to be a yeah, he was. um yeah wait uh I remember that like his entire presentation was just full of like poetry so and, cool and just stuff. like yeah I was fucking it, I it was, was great man it, it was yeah. real good and you could tell you could tell that he gave a shit about yeah. his presentation and delivery yeah, yeah, yeah. as well like he really wanted to, our to enroll us on reliability yeah. <laughs> our, our manager Kevin laughed at me because he knew how much I fucking loved his presentation yeah. style yeah and you're he's just like you were, he, Kevin was just like you're just like on the edge of your seat yeah man. Fucking I was he taking notes bro funny, I was taking notes he thought notes, it was man. the funniest thing how like excited we were i still have pictures of the slides you were yeah. saying like buckminster fuller buckminster fuller was which, one of the ones um yeah. another it's one on my reading list another one that he really liked uh, that i saw i picked up the book when i was in the salinas in san jose mm -hmm. i forget the name of the author but it was another one of those like old okay those old like theologian dudes yeah. like Did those you, guys they love studying philosophy and man those guys are balling it just once you read them you're like because you can get Oh, I should read, and you fall out of the habit. But then once you stumble upon a good text again, and you're reading it, and you're like, I can't. I. Can't. It's the path of least resistance. I can't afford not to read sure. this because the thoughts are so are so powerful, and they're so practical for you to do everything that you want. That to be fumbling around in the dark, trying to free, like shoot from the hip and yeah. free willy it as opposed to these guys literally telling you how to yeah. do it. it. It's just, it's the path of least resistance. Yeah. It's not work. It's the easiest route. It's just like having a mentor right there. Right? Yeah. That's already been there. I remember Jim Rohn saying like, there's people that have written down how they became successful. <laughs> Their entire lives is on paper and you can get it for $5. He's like, and people don't, don't read, read it. it. It's uh, like Seneca. They don't read it. Seneca said that um, we don't choose um who our parents are but we can choose whose kids we are oh and that's what he's wow, talking that's about interesting you can because everyone you know you have the influence from your parents yeah. and we're lucky like obviously yeah, we're fortunate. lucky that our parents are super nice and lucky but obviously they're they're people too and everything they've learned isn't going to be in alignment with getting ready for us to do whatever we want per yeah. se. and we have the opportunity to go out 
and take seek counsel with these great men and thinkers YouTube, of all time. YouTube, Audible, books from Value Village. Like, yeah, we, I rem we remember we used to one go, of the, we, used we to would go, go to that Value streets, Village bro. and we just get more books than we could ever yeah, read because yeah. we just get fucking, because yeah. it's like we're going gold hunting. Yeah. The, it's the, literally that amazing. The point wasn't to read them all. The point was to fill my bookshelf so that I had no excuse not to read something. Yeah. Like, it's all there. Like, if yeah. I really don't feel like reading the one I have, there's yeah. A selection of the yeah. best texts that I can pick yeah. up and go for. Yeah, like on this thought, like that's. What I like that gold mine. That, that gold mine concept. Can Just you, like going. Can forward. you explain? Can you explain that a little more? Because the the, re the reason I thought about it is because like I used to listen to like an hour long audio of Alan Watts and like I would get parts of it and there's benefit of having it going in the yeah, background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I decided that I wanted to listen until I find a good idea and then pause it and then make a note about it and then think about it and just think about that idea and like sometimes I only listen to ten minutes of audio now. But if I'm listening to Jim Rohn and Jim Rohn shares something that I can actually apply right now, not pausing, taking the note, going and listening to it again, and then seeing what I can do differently today to apply that idea, it doesn't make sense to let it just kind of fade off. You don't know what idea. You don't, because you don't know what idea is going to be the missing puzzle piece that fits it into the groove. Because I've, and then it's one just thing. nudges that, it right in there. It, right in the right place. And it's one thing when you're just reading it and then it happens. But I've kind of feel like I've hit this like tipping point where I've read so much where I can see the pieces kind of like forming yeah. in this idea of like yeah. mastering, so to speak, this like way of living, of cultivating a, a type of being and awareness and consciousness and feeling good and doing the right things in the world where it's just, it, it's like an obvious magnetism. Yeah. And like when you go to the bookstore, like you don't know what, but you don't know what, you don't know what page it's going to be. You might read a book and it was, it didn't do it for you but you might read one sentence that fucking blows you away like the the seneca one yeah you know you act like mortals with all and you act like mortals and all that you fear and like immortals and all that you desire and it's taught him talking about people pushing off that for plans. people that just like just caught that for the first time so yeah this is seneca we talked about him earlier seneca on the, on the shortness of life on the short life is long if you know how to use it which that is a title alone it's it's, it's no no he, he talks about people complain about how short life, but how short life is. But no, no, there's lots of time. It's not that we're ill supplied, but we're wasteful of it. it says a sufficiently generous amount of time has been given to each <laughs> one of us. Well in, put. 